Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a senior studying at NYU. I'm studying computer science and linguistics. And uh, welcome to July's Reading Ramble. The last one I did was in March, if you wanna check that out. So uh, pretty much all I'm talking about is what I've read this month and what I haven't read and some other stuff, question mark? I just have bullet points for this video, so it's pretty laid back. I'd love to hear what you've been reading this month, this year, whatever your goals are recommendations, all that fun stuff in the just in the comments, not the description, the comments down below, because these videos are meant to be a conversation of sorts. That's that. In the last reading ramble, I'm, I set a bunch of goals of what I was going to read. I don't know if I'll cut to that right here, but if I will, here we go. I want to do four books a month, one book a week, but uh, I don't know. I'm just not sitting down to read. And so my goal here is for the month of April, finish, finish all these bad boys. But I <laughs> haven't been reading that much. It's funny because I, I want to read more and reading just you know, I made a whole video about this. If you want to check that out here as well, about getting the reading habit back, but it's become something where it's like, it's not fully relaxing, but it's not fully work. And so if I quote unquote book myself for a day of work, I don't end up reading during that day. And then I don't end up reading when that day of work is over, is over, excuse me. But this month, this month I have read quite a bit. So this is my, reading list of sorts that I have on Todoist. Books that have been recommended to me, unobtained books that I want to get, books I have that I will get to in the future, and then this is like my current reading list of stuff. So May and June each had their own tasks but like didn't get books checked off really. So here we have what I've read this month. So really quick I want to call out Ranger's Apprentice 1, 2, and 3. Um, I was talking with someone and we were reminiscing about Ranger's Apprentice and so we started reading them again. It's really fun reading fantasy again, especially fantasy that like I these were my favorite books as a kid. This is why I do archery and I still do archery to this day. So books one, one, two, and three. It's just fun to revisit them. I've, I love them. I, I don't count them on Goodreads only because they're really fun to read. Um, and I want Goodreads to be a log of not books I've already read pretty much. I'm gonna move over here so I can have the books fly up. But uh, this other book that was on the list called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Uh, let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, Peter Thiel, Thiel. I'm not gonna say what it's all about because you can find the summary yourself. My big takeaway from it, because I don't really intend on ever running a business, was it's more valuable to, and this is what the whole zero to one title is about, it's more valuable to dig into an original idea than take an existing idea and just kind of copy it. Google, probably the best example. You don't say I'm gonna go Bing something, you say I'm gonna go Google it, even if you go on to Bing or whatever. Uh, I think Google's even in the dictionary. Super valuable ideas, what makes things original, what's important to focus on uh, in a company. My big takeaways from, I guess the company vibe was like, who should I work with in general? I also listened to this audiobook, so it was 2x speed. I listened to it over like the past three months, but I finished it this month and that was like the second half of it. Um, but yeah, so if you're someone into tech and wanna make a company or something, definitely would recommend it. Even if you're not, it might be a good listen. Uh, it's just fascinating. I have no interest in marketing or the business world, but it had some some good truths I needed to hear anyway. Another book that I started also in June, maybe even, no, I started this in June, but I finished it in July. I started a bunch of books, did not finish any in the months before July. Anyway, that, that is Spelunky. But this is uh, in a series of boss fight books. I believe this is the only one, or it's it's, it's its first one where the creation of the game is top taught is told by its creator. So this whole series it analyzes a bunch of different games. I mean, there are so many as I'll show on the screen here. I have the Chrono Trigger one, as you might've seen on the Todoist list. I don't think I brought it with me to New York for some reason, probably because if I finish the books I have with me, I can have it sent over here quite easily. This was great read. I, I think even if you're not into game design, the cool thing about the autobiographical perspective. I also love autobiographies, but you kind of get to see Derek Yu's whole challenges and what his mindsets were in different points. Going from, oh, I'll have this game done in a year, and then three years later, they finally have it done, and how it's easier to tell yourself you'll get it done in six months and then postpone that multiple times rather than say, this is gonna take me three years. It also talks about some great aspects of game design, and I would definitely recommend these books in general, even though I've only read this one, if you're into game design and game development and whatnot. But if you're a creative of any kind, this was a really good one. And if you haven't heard Splunky, uh, it's a video game. I, you can find a description online quite easily. <laughs> Would definitely recommend it. It's it's relatively short too, uh, and you can kind of get into this as a read. And if you play Spelunky, a lot of secrets in here that kind of all come out. 
So take that as a spoiler or, ooh, maybe there's something I didn't know existed. What's really cool, last thing I'll say about this book is how Derek Yu sees the Splunky community. Because for me, making games, or at least games in general, one of the most important things is does this game have a community? Can I talk with other people? Can I play with other people about these games? And it's really cool seeing the creator's perspective on the community and how it evolved over time and its influence on the game's development and design. Next up is How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. Uh, he's very well known for The Omnivore's Dilemma. I've actually never read it. He's also a journalist for the New York Times. I've never read any of his other stuff. I don't know much about him, but this was one of the 10 best books of 2018 in the New York Times. Now I read the first quarter of this back in 2018. And I remember because it first came out and my sister was graduating college and I brought it with me, but I never finished it. I think I left the book where we were staying, but I also didn't intend to finish it because similar to another book that I'm gonna talk about in just a minute that I want to read this month, I felt a lot of it was going over my head. Long story short, this book is divided into some big sections. It's all about LSD and mushrooms and stuff. I'm not someone who drinks or does drugs or whatever, but I'm sort of tempted to try LSD now. Very specifically in like an experimental setting, maybe, but I, I definitely won't. I definitely won't, at least not for a while. But it does make me very, very curious. The first part is kind of about the history of LSD and how it was really skewed in politics and whatever. Why was it stigmatized, whatever. And then the second half is sort of the science behind it and how it was studied. And then the author, Michael Pollan, does all, not all these different kinds, psilocybin, which is the mushroom, or psilocybin, psilocybin, LSD, and then the toad, which is some other one. And he tells about his own experiences with those. And again, he's in the right settings for those um, with these underground guides and whatever, which is really cool to read. And then he talks about the modern day neuroscience and specifically the treatment of uh, how LSD might actually be very useful and helpful in psychiatric treatment of mental illnesses, from depression to anxiety to the existential dread of cancer patients. It was super cool to read that and he presents it in a very good way. The part of me that loves neuroscience was like, ooh, like I'm learning a lot about neuroscience, but the part of me that was, you know, the layman, which is most of me, is like, oh, I'm understanding pretty much all of this, at least to some degree. So he does a really good job at that. Uh, I believe he's a journalist by trade, so he should. <laughs> Great read, very educational, and I, I don't know, it was cool. The history part might be, was probably boring in my opinion at least, but it made the rest of the book have a lot more of an impact just in terms of like hearing why it hasn't been researched and whatever. One part of the takeaway was, ooh, I <laughs> kind of want to try this. Uh, but the other part was, this is kind of promising for psychiatric treatment and whatever. And then the last book of the month, which I haven't actually finished yet, I have to record my learning log. Uh, this is going up first. So if you're around today, wait a couple hours. My Japanese learning log number five should be coming out. But I was supposed to finish this this week and I haven't, I'm like almost halfway through it's called Making Sense of Japanese. Uh, I have a little pet theory about learning languages that as adults, we should learn at least some fundamental linguistics of the language we're learning, whether that be grammar, phonology, uh, semantics, pragmatics, grammar, and syntax, I should have said. It's really important. I mean, there are like 30 pages on the differences between two particles in Japanese, wa and ga. I'm definitely gonna reread this book when I learn more Japanese because I'll get more out of it, I think. But the nuances of language are so important and they're pretty much impossible to grasp as adults. I think this is in my opinion, simply because we don't have the same outlook on kids. But the way we learn languages, we just need to equate everything to our native language, essentially. Um, we don't need to learn the deeper understanding or whatever. So these nuances are really good because these are the kind of nuances that turn you from fluent to near native. So again, I'll read this again in the future. It'll make much more sense. But he's pretty much like, your textbook will tell you this. Here's why they're technically right, but also wrong. There are times when he says things in the book and it's like, okay, an actual human has written this. So I'm really enjoying it. I need to finish it within the next two days, maybe three days pretty much um, to make sure I can check off that July books task. So those were the books of the month. Those three Rangers Apprentice books, zero to one, Spelunky, How to Change Your Mind, and Making Sense of Japanese. Um, that felt pretty smooth. Good talk about takeaways and stuff. And then really quick, um, my goals for the next month. Now my goal for the year was to read four books a month. I think last year was 60 books in the year. This this one came around to 40 books this year because I needed to reduce my goal. And I'm just below half on Goodreads. So let's get these books, shall we? All right, so at the end of March, one of the books I said I was gonna finish was The Will to Power by Nietzsche, but I put this down. The thing was I would sit down and read it. And then after like a page or two, I just get lost in thought. So 
Very special case here. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna pick this back up this month or wait until I can just read it through, but reading philosophy takes a long time, as it should, in my opinion. So, speaking of that goal, on a base level, Ranger's Apprentice books aside, I want to read Chaos Monkeys. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, How to Change Your Mind, I found that it was going over my head. Similar story here. This book is all about big tech companies in Silicon Valley. It's decently long, but the text is kind of big. I remember reading like two chapters of it in high school and I was like, this is kind of boring, but I think it'll be important if I want to do software development. And that's kind of where I'm going. So here I go. I got this at the bookstore. I went to the bookstore to find The Myth of Sisyphus. Uh, by Albert Camus. I did not find it. <laughs> and then I picked up this instead by Alan de Botain, uh, The Pleasures and Sorrows of Work. I don't know. I thought it, I just saw it and I thought it would be a good read about, you know, what's good, good mindful work, soul-sucking work, a good uh, refreshing work. Ugh, so many books and it's hard to choose. So I gotta just commit to them. Letters to Milena. I think I'm just gonna read this as I go through. Uh, I have like tabbed some things when they feels like they relate to me, but if you're not familiar with this, this is just a bunch of Kafka's letters. You can look up a synopsis of your, your own. And I think this will satiate my philosophy drive. So yeah, that's that. And then my stretch goal is anything else on my bookshelf. Maybe Aristotle's Poetics. After the class I took, I also got that. Yeah, there's some good stuff up there. <laughs> I want to read Seneca's letters from a Stoic, but I, I want to read everything and I just get stopped by because I, I end up not reading anything. So yeah, that is three books, goal for this month, and finishing Making Sense of Japanese and whatever Ranger's Apprentice I read. But yeah, if you have any book recs or anything, I have such a long list on Amazon. And yeah, let me know what you're reading, what you want to read, what your goal is to read in the comments down below. Again, these videos, these more relaxed form of videos are a conversation. Uh, and I'd love to keep making them that. My influence on this platform is practically non-existent, but it's, you know, 10, 20 people view this video and are like, oh yeah, cool. Like, you know what? I'm going to go sit down and read now. One thing that's really helped me is uh, remind myself how much I want to read because right now my habit is to go to watch you know some TV show or something whatever I don't know I don't know how to put it when I want to take a break or something but what if I'm if I just remind myself like wait I really want to read like letters to Milena or chaos monkeys like I really want to read those boom um, you can I read half of how to change your mind in a day yeah that's my call to action for you uh, if you don't have a goal already set one go ahead and open a Goodreads account you can add me I think I'll Try to remember to put my Goodreads thing in the description. It'd be cool. I don't know. Again, I want to make this a thing. Hopefully I don't wait four months until the next one and actually read all this stuff. It's just three books too. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, again, if you're around later today, come back for the language learning log. Otherwise, keep your eye out for some posts. I'm going to be putting a list of videos that I intend to get out in the month of August. We're kicking it off with a bang on Thursday, maybe Monday, probably not with how much I have to do. Thursday with a language learning video and gamification, the pros and cons of that. So keep an eye out. But yeah, have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next month.